All right. Um, thanks for everyone that is tuning in for this little interview with Carrie, um, our Frog Project Mama. Um, it's so nice to be to be here today with Carrie. Um, I know that you will probably, most of you will have spent some time with her on the mat, um, but today's the opportunity for you to get to know a little more about what Carrie does um, outside of the Frog Project. We've got some really great questions that people have sent in. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to go through all of those because they're awesome. Um, this is the first of our series of Meet the Teacher interviews. Um, I hope that you enjoy this little chat with Carrie and myself. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Hi, Oli. Thank you. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm going to jump right in with a question from Yulia. Uh, Yulia's question is, how did Carrie start her yoga journey? And was it always a full-time job? <laughs> when I saw this question, I got really excited about it. And um, it's a big question, and I'll try to keep it nice <laughs> and um, concise. But it was never, or it was, it was not always a full-time job. Um, yoga for me began with um, the desire to move a little bit, to be active a little bit, and never to be a teacher. I had no, no, not no desire, but I didn't expect that I would ever be able to share yoga in this way. Um, I began to, um, began practicing yoga many years ago as a way to remain active when I was living in a really conservative part of the world up in the mountains in Pakistan. And previously I'd been um, very much like enjoying running and hiking and all this kind of uh, outdoor activity. And, and when I lived there in Pakistan, it wasn't really permitted or allowed or safe to be kind of off running, <laughs> running through the mountains. And so I was like, what can I do indoors? Um, and started practicing yoga a lot a lot a lot every day in fact before school and would try to pull my teacher friends in to practice with me and the teachers that I worked with there as well to practice with me I was working in this little school and from here I moved into other countries in in Asia particularly and also my yoga came with me and I got quite into doing some meditation as well and just really 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 enjoyed yoga but never got to go to classes there were never classes in these places that I lived I always lived quite in the sticks um as I was an English teacher traveling around and um it wasn't until I was in Sri Lanka and at this point I'd met Martin and um we actually got married when we were living in Sri Lanka and he laughs at me for saying for saying this he tells this story but as, as pretty much as soon as we got married, I quit my job and said, right, I'm going to be a yoga teacher now. And um, and I went and did my yoga teacher training at this time. And, and from that point on, I was like, I want to make this a full time job. I want to share yoga, um, something that had got me through many times in life when when I needed it. And that was it. The rest is history. And that was eight, nine years ago, maybe more. I've lost count. <laughs> Wow. Thanks, Carrie. Um, <clears throat> that's a very good answer. I learned some things about you there for sure. Um, the next question, um, Kath sent in, and Kath's question is, I'd love to know what inspired Carrie to set up the Frog Project. Uh, I'm guessing lockdown had a part to play. Was it always intended to be a long term plan? It was a huge risk uh, to take, given that no one knew at the time how life would look after COVID. I guess that's a really part. good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's got many parts to it, but all it kind of links together. So um, as Kath knows, the Frog Project began, uh, well, the Frog Project online began pretty much the, the first day of lockdown. And um, so the Frog Project existed before it was online. It existed um, as face-to-face -face classes in Scarborough, um, which is how I met Orly. And um, previously to that, there were face-to-face -face classes in Sri Lanka as well. So that's the Frog Project when it kind of started. But as we were teaching and getting to know different people, 
um, Martin and I had always said, you know, we want we want to build something bigger. And while Scarborough is a wonderful place and there are many people that practice yoga in Scarborough, it didn't have um, the space to, to have a big studio. There wasn't this really big community of people coming and going, which maybe you get in London or other big places. And we said, let's let's take it online because this way we can access different um, parts of the country, different parts of the world, get to know other people, get to practice yoga together. And so it was the plan to go online with the Frog Project. Martin has a lot of skills of teaching online and running these online big conferences and things like this. And so we had some of this background already. And then when COVID happened, um, and I had a, a busy class at that time um, of 30 or so people that I was practicing with in Scarborough. I said, OK, let's get online quick. So we started online on, on like the first day of, of lockdown and everybody that we knew came along, all the students from Scarborough and then also friends and family and, and everybody kind of all joined us. Um, and we didn't know what would happen. Um, but obviously, as time went by, people were becoming more comfortable with Zoom and everyone was looking for online things to do. And so it kind of it pushed us um, off into the deep end, if you'd like. Um, it wasn't planned on that day, on that month. We had an eight month old baby at that time as well. So without COVID, it probably would have happened a little bit later. But COVID pushed us in and yeah, and then it's 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 taking itself to new heights um, every year and hopefully we'll still be here in years to come. <laughs> hopefully that answered Kat's question. <laughs> and so, yes, yeah, so a very, a very uh, thorough answer. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and and Kat's, uh, Kat has sent in another question which is um, related in some way to um, some of the things you mentioned. So I think you partially answered this question, but there is a little more to say on it. Um, Kat said, it also intrigues me as to how the teachers have links to each other. Um, and yet there's so much distance between some teachers. So I don't know if you want to expand on that a little bit more. Karen. Yeah, I love that question. And um, all the teachers do have links. Uh, especially a couple of you. So Orly, um, some of you may know Orly is from Scarborough. And at the time when I met Orly, you were living in Newcastle, weren't you? And you came to visit your family in Scarborough and you came to one of my Frog Project classes at the British Centre. So that's how we met me and Orly. And then maybe a year later, I was looking for somebody to cover my classes while I had um, my daughter and Orly said I'll come down from Newcastle every week to take your class um, and visit my family at the same time so me and Orly got 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 close at that time so this was pre-COVID and Orly was teaching my Buddhist centre class for me while I was off um, having uh, Roxy our little girl and then um, so when the Fog Project started I, I kind of called up Oli and I said, do you want to teach online? And she was like, yeah, sure, let's let's add some classes. So me and Oli, were, we started teaching um, these for Project Live classes. And at that time also there was Andrea, who was another friend of mine from Malaysia, actually, um, who had trained to teach yoga. And so it was me, Oli and Andrea in the early days. Then Liesl joined the team and Liesl is from Martin's past, Liesl, um, and Martin met in Vietnam when they were both teaching English uh, many moons ago. Around the time I was in Pakistan, they were in Vietnam and they got to meeting and then these all trained as a, as a yoga teacher. And so she joined us. Um, and then all through COVID, uh, we met Therese. So Therese was living in Kosovo at the time and she got in touch and just said, like, I really like what you're doing on the Frog Project and is there a space for me? So we got to know Therese and when there was a space for her, she came on board as well. And then there was Jess and Jess is a friend of Ollie's. They got to, to meet each other in London through yoga and so then when we were looking for a new teacher a couple of years ago Ollie said well our friend Jess is is fab so we chatted to her and then she joined the group um so that's kind of how we started it was word of mouth and friends of friends and this kind of thing um and then more recently so Neve and Harriet and Yulia and Beth 
have all come to us through a wonderful yoga jobs website um which is quite fun actually um we post a video application form so there's me asking questions and sharing a bit about the frog project and then they record their answers and then we do like little interviews and things with them and so that's how we met um our newest recruits so this is it this is all of us together um and hopefully you feel the love and the energy that we that we kind of share as a as a team when you're in our classes. Thanks, Oli. <laughs> um, yeah, what a lovely team to be a part of. Um, <clears throat> the next question is from Rosie. And she uh, she says, I know you were a TEFL teacher in a previous life. And you've already told us a little bit about that life, Carrie. <laughs> um, <laughs> she wonders how much of your transferable skills do you think you brought into teaching yoga um she wants to know what the similarities and differences are yeah such a good question and even asked it as a true tefl um teacher herself i know rosie also teaches tefl but so tefl teaching english as a foreign language where i began where martin began where liesel began um, and so surely there are some similarities. Um, there are differences too. Online um, yoga is very different to in-person yoga. It's very different to in-person teaching. Um, but I think there are many transferable skills from that kind of teaching TEFL is, is very interactive. It takes a lot of communication and a lot of working together and exploring things and learning about yourself. And I think yoga is the same. We're there, we're together we're working with each other, we're learning about ourselves through our yoga practice. Um, the main differences, I suppose, are in a TEFL classroom, like, there's so much <laughs> group work, if you like, but there's, you know, you get into groups and you, you ponder through things and you talk about things and then you share. And obviously, this doesn't exist in our Fog Project classes, because they're kind of teacher led. Um, but it does exist in our yoga teacher training classroom. So there's a few people now, 10 people on the yoga teacher training course and our Thursday night sessions. We have this three hour Thursday night class and they're quite definitely, you know, we we go into groups and we practice with each other and then we come out and we have quite specific questions about what we've learned and what we've experienced and this kind of thing. So it's building this self-awareness um, and then sharing it with other people. So while the regular Frog Project classes are not very definitely, definitely the, the training that we do, and we've got lots of ideas for future trainings as well. So even if you don't wanna do yoga teacher training, there might be other courses um, headed your way in the future and you get to experience this, this two-way communication. Book clubs a bit more definitely um, if you've been to book club. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Fab. Yeah, that's that's great. I guess there's lots of different spaces in which you can um, apply skills that you've learned through through TEFL and other um, spaces that you've um, kind of lived through in the in the past and um, things that you're still experiencing. Book clubs are really good example of, of something that you do with a frog project that is um not necessarily all about yoga but um yeah it means you can draw in other aspects of your experience um thanks kerry and we have one more question i realized that we we've reached the quarter past 11 mark um carrie how do you feel about taking one more quick question from yeah Susie? let's do it let's do it okay great Great. They're such good questions. I'm glad that we <laughs> them. Uh, Susie said, I would like to know how Carrie feels about all the companies that bombard me with ads telling me how much weight I will lose if I do yoga. It annoys me and feels counter to the whole point of yoga. That's such a good question. <laughs> and I totally understand and, and hear where you're coming from, Susie. I think when you practice yoga regularly and you experience all these incredible benefits, then when you hear people or see people kind of pigeonholing it as a as a 
as a something to fix something else it can be quite frustrating and especially when you might experience yoga as not such a physical activity you might experience it more for the mental health more for your emotional self um and then you see people saying oh weight loss weight loss then you think you know like that's not that's not what yoga is about and I totally agree with you on that side of things um what I do think though which is quite interesting is that and I'd like to know what everybody a question to everybody here like when you started yoga do you whatever whatever was the reason you started yoga in the first place is that the reason that you keep coming back to the mat now and for me it certainly wasn't um I mean elements I'm sure exist but whatever your entry point is whatever your initial reason for coming onto your yoga mat or trying your first class is it's a growing sort of journey it evolves it transforms your relationship with it is is really quite different and so while I don't condone online companies trying to push their products and and things um through a manner that might not be as truthful if somebody comes to the yoga mat with a, a reason such as weight loss and then they're still here three years later they will have found something more than that and so I think that it is not a good thing but however we can get people to the yoga mat let's let's get people to the yoga mat obviously <laughs> we are gonna lie but we are gonna um help people find their way there and then hopefully they stick around when they realize yes it's not a cardiovascular exercise which will burn 500 calories in 15 minutes but nothing is it's a lifestyle change isn't it um so i hope that answers a bit of the question um probably gone a bit on a tangent. <laughs> no that was perfect thank you Carrie um, and thank you to everyone that has sent in questions um, today they were so good um, and if you have more that you want to send in for future sessions such as these um, it will be great to hear from you again um, it'd be great to hear for, for, from some, some of you that maybe haven't sent a question in so far um thank you very very much for showing up today or for catching up with this recording um in your own time carrie i've really loved uh, getting to chat to you in this way and I've, I've learned so much about you that i i didn't already know we've known each other for quite a lot of years so um it's a real treat um getting to hear more about um what's kind of led you to the frog project um a little more about you and the the journeys um, that you've been along in order for us to meet and for you to meet everyone else in the our little pond. <laughs> Thanks so um, much, Orly. <laughs> it would be really nice if um, people wanted to, to feedback about the, the session today, if they wanted to drop me a message. Um, I would love to hear how you found it. Um, as I've mentioned, this is the first in a series of Meet the Teacher interviews. Um, so there will be more of these coming your way. Keep a little eye out and hopefully we will see you then. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks to all that joined and all that contributed their questions. Have a lovely day. See you soon. Thank you.